Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now do me a favor, I want you to think of something that you don't like to eat. I'm gonna try to guess what it is. So right now, picture it in your mind, then take out a piece of paper and then write it down. Seriously, I'm gonna give you some time. Go ahead and write it down. We're going to DEF CON 5. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Now, I could go with one of the classics like mayonnaise or liver or oysters or mustard, but I'm gonna go with something else. I'm gonna guess something else. Did you say poison or how about lava or dog feces? Now, you probably didn't write those down and you're saying to yourself, no, you asked me what kind of food I don't like to eat, but that's not what I asked. Take a look again. <laughs> Do me a favor, I want you to think of something that you don't like to eat. <laughs> so be honest here, which one do you prefer? Eating a spoonful of the thing that you said that you don't like to eat, or eating a spoonful of poison? Given this alternative, you might find the thing that you don't like is actually something that you prefer. So I guess it means that you do like it. And that's my point. Economics is a study of analyzing choices and making decisions, and most decisions are not set in stone. They significantly depend on the different alternatives. You probably never thought that you'd prefer a spoonful of mayonnaise, but under the right conditions, you would. Mm. <laughs> Now here's another one to think about. I'm sure many of you have a pet dog, so how much money would someone have to give you to give them your pet dog? Would you accept $100? How about $1,000? How about $100,000? That's a lot of money. And if you're still saying no to the money, then how about other things like your family? Would you prefer to keep your parents or your dog? Or how about your own life or your dog? Doing this thought experiment helps you figure out what you truly value. Some people say, oh, I love my house or my car, but under the right conditions and for the right price, they would sell them, so they don't really love them. In fact, the things that you truly love are the things that you would sacrifice your own life for. So your family or your friends or your faith, those are the things that are truly priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Here is a mind-blowing fact. Every decision that you've ever made, you wanted to make. You preferred that option. Really? Yep, if you went to school today, you wanted to go to school. You weighed the benefits and the costs and you looked at the different alternatives and you chose school. The benefits of school are pretty obvious. On average, the higher your education, the less likely you are to be unemployed and the more income you earn. Those monetary benefits that can easily be quantified are called the explicit benefits. But don't forget you also go to school because you want to see your friends or feel productive or maybe sit next to your crush. Those implicit benefits are harder to quantify, but they're just as valuable. Now economists call the total benefit that you receive when you do something total utility. And to measure that, they have this term called utils. Think of these as like happiness points that allow you to measure the enjoyment of everything that you do. Oh, this is worth at least 50 utils. So if you went to school today, you must have assumed that the total utility you got from going to school would be greater than the total cost. Now, if you go to public school, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, there's no cost for going to school, it's free, public education is available to everybody. But remember, one of the key concepts in economics is everything has a cost. Now, for example, let's say you paid $3 to take the bus to school, and don't forget, there's the taxes that you have to pay to pay for the schools. Those out-of-pocket costs are the explicit costs of going to school, but don't forget, there's also implicit costs your opportunity cost. When you're at school, you can't be at the beach or an amusement park or sleeping or at work. And if you have a job and you make $10 an hour, going to school for six hours means you gave up $60 of foregone income. That's your opportunity cost of going to school. So your opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative, the thing you gave up when you went to school. And remember, it's totally subjective and different for different individuals. But it's definitely a cost and something you should add in when you're making decisions. Anyways, my point here is public education is not free. Remember, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Actually, let's talk about your lunch. Hey, Internet, this is Jacob hey, Clifford, hey. and welcome to Econ Movie. Avengers Endgame Probably stop staring at the floor because it's creepy, though. Too late. All time. And you, know, you guys are losers. Kind of Question, is paying $5 for your school lunch a cost of going to school? Well, not necessarily. You need to eat anyways, and if you were gonna spend $5 on lunch, even if you didn't go to school, then you can't factor in $5 spent on a school lunch as part of the cost of going to school. The same idea applies if you're deciding to move between two different cities, right? If the cost of living is the same in both cities, then you can't factor in and shouldn't factor in the cost of living when you move as a cost of moving. You're gonna pay those costs either way. My point here is to maximize your utility, you need to make sure you're weighing in the right benefits and the right costs. And that's why you're taking an economics class. Remember, every decision you've ever made, 
you wanted to make. One time I was in class, I was explaining that concept, and the student raised his hand and he said, no, he has an example that disproves this fact. He said that he recently went on a date with his girlfriend. Instead of watching the action movie that he really wanted to watch, he agreed to watch the romantic comedy that she wanted to watch. And he confidently argued that this disproves this idea, that he actually did something that he didn't want to do. I am not watching The Notebook again. Can somebody help me find the notebook? Now, if you understand explicit benefits and costs, then you should definitely understand why he was wrong. Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you can think of any other examples that disprove this assertion. So as you know, every episode, I put something on the wall behind me as a memory tool to help you remember that key concept. So to help you remember the idea of explicit and implicit benefits and costs, I have this. This is a tiny box with two pennies. Obviously to you it's worthless, but to me it's one of my most prized possessions. When I first met my wife in college, we listened to a song and it talked about having a penny with a hole in it. It kind of became our song, so I went and found a 1976 Canadian penny, because my wife is Canadian and she was born in 76, and a 1977 American pennies. I drilled holes in both of them, put them in a box, and gave it to my girlfriend, who's now my wife. On paper, it's literally not worth two pennies, but I wouldn't sell this for $100 or $1,000 or $10,000. Actually, maybe I would sell it for $10,000. Sorry, Paula. <laughs> At this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, this stuff is really easy. Explicit benefits, explicit costs, implicit benefits, implicit costs. You got it. But trust me, on a test, the questions can get pretty tricky. So you're definitely going to want to practice. So it's time for a pop quiz. <laughs> Before I give you some practice questions, if you like this video and you want me to make more, please like this video and subscribe and check out my ultimate review packet. It'll totally help you review and practice and rock your economics class. Now for the questions. They're not going to be on the screen for very long, so you have to pause this video and look in the comments below for the answer key, okay? Thanks for watching my videos. Until next time.